Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? Doing well? What a beautiful, beautiful day we had today. I'm Jim Waring, a Georgetown supervisor, and I've had the occasion to lead this several years now, and every year I think we've had good weather, so we're blessed with that and thankful. Uh, we're grateful to have so many of you join us today. I can't think of a better setting. We love the, the setup here, although it kind of filled up like a CRC Church from the back to the front. We've got lots of room up here in case you want to join us up front. But uh, good to see so many of you. It's a beautiful cemetery. I always think it's, it's just sort of the quintessential cemetery. And uh, we love what the uh, parks and, and the uh, maintenance department do, both with our parks and with special places like this cemetery. And uh, in fact, my wife and I feels a little different this year because in this past year we bought plots here seems a little strange, uh, but it's the adult thing to do at some point, I suppose. Uh, and there's more room, by the way. Uh, people are dying to get here, but uh, uh, it wasn't so good. Anyways, anyways. Now, we are blessed and, and thankful that you all would join us. Um, community is important, isn't it? Being together with community, our neighbors, our friends, uh, relatives, remembering those that have gone before us, especially those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice for whom we come today to honor them, right? To take a few minutes out of our day uh, and to remember why it is that we enjoy the freedoms that we have. Is that right? Yes. So we appreciate that and so many of you for all of your sacrifice as well. We're going to um, start off today with a number from the much decorated Jenison Marching Band under the leadership of their director, Mr. Dave Zamborski, or as the kids call him, I think Mr. Z. And uh, we're going to also hear from them a couple of times yet this morning. Some of you have a flyer. Others of you perhaps didn't get one. If you want one, I think there are more. But otherwise, I'll kind of let you know a little bit of what's going to happen. So we'll have a number from the marching band, followed by a prayer of blessing from Pastor Steve Harrington here from Chapel Point Church, also a 1988 Jenison High School grad. After that, Boy Scout Troop 354, always dependable, Always here to post our colors and to say the Pledge of Allegiance. We appreciate that. After that, we'll hear again from the marching band and then the presentation of the wreath by Rob Holland, one of our Georgetown Township Fire Department leaders. After the presentation of the wreath, then at that point, we'll get to our main speaker, and I'll leave that for uh, introduction at a later time. So at this time, without further ado, we ask Mr. Zimborski to take it away. Let's pray together this morning. Father in heaven, we come before you today as the creator of heaven and earth, the sustainer of life. And so we thank you, first and foremost, for this beautiful day that we can gather here together. We thank you that we can come together as a community to remember, uh, to be grateful for those who have served in our armed forces defending the freedoms of our country. And Father, as we think of their bravery that sent them to the front lines, both past and current, we think, Father, of the bravery of Jesus Christ standing in our place, 
for us on our behalf. As we think, Father, of the, the sacrifice of the men and women of our armed services make and the blood that they shed in defense of our country's freedom and the rights that we stand for, Father, we think of the sacrifice that Jesus made in his death in our place for the forgiveness of our sins so that we would have rights to stand before you, not of our own accord, but of what he has made for us. And as we think of the freedoms that we enjoy in our country, the freedoms that thousands have given their lives for, and and those who will continue to stand at our nation's borders defending those freedoms, we think, Father, of the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ, freedom from sin and victory over sin and death in our lives. So our hearts are full of gratitude as we remember. We thank you for those who have given their lives, for the families that have sacrificed them, and for uh, those who are continuing to serve our country in this way. And we thank you for the relationship that we also enjoy with you because of Jesus Christ. We pray that you would bless this day together as we remember these things, that you'd be honored and glorified in our lives, that you'd be honored and glorified in our country. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, neighbors and friends. 
My name is Becky Steele and I serve the residents of Georgetown Township as an elected trustee. It is an honor and a privilege to introduce today's keynote speaker, my colleague and my friend, John Schwamm. John and his wife Pam are parents of four and grandparents of eight and they have lived in our community for about 40 years. John began his professional career as an apprentice jeweler and salesman, and then began teaching business and marketing at Granville High School. Throughout his teaching career, John received many recognitions, including being named Granville Teacher of the Year and being a finalist for Michigan Teacher of the Year. John was beloved by his students and known for his colorful, festive neckties, which he frequently received as gifts. After successfully teaching through a global pandemic, John announced his retirement and last spring celebrated the end of his 45 year teaching career in Granville Public Schools. John continues to lend his talents to the business department at Grand Rapids Community College where he serves as an adjunct professor. John has served the residents here of Georgetown Township as an elected representative for our township board since 2012. John is a vocal advocate for conservative leadership, responsible spending, low taxes, and investment in our parks and pedestrian walkways. He is humble, sincere, communicative, and kind. Please help me welcome one of my mentors and a dear friend, Georgetown Township Trustee, John Schwamm. Well, Becky, that was incredibly beautiful, just the way I wrote, I wrote it for you. Becky, also a teacher, last year she had 750 students a week that she was teaching. And now she's at the middle school teaching math and doing an incredibly good job and also serving you incredibly well as a township trustee along with me. I am so incredibly honored to be here. Thank you for this opportunity. But I also want to thank the band for marching in the parade, doing a sensational job. Thank you so much. Rushing down here every year and you make this. Um, an incredible experience for all of you, all of us. I want to mention that um, there's going to be a Celebration of America Patriotic Benefit Concert. They're passing these out in the parade, June 22nd and 24th at uh, 7 p.m. at the Jenison Center for the Arts. And they're going to the Macy Thanksgiving Day Parade. How wow. oh, wow. awesome. They're going to play patriotic music and I'm sure they would take donations to help cover their costs. So thank you so much, and what a wonderful job you did in the parade today. Well, this is my incredible honor uh, to talk about three veterans, three local leaders that changed our, our community dramatically. Men of passion, men of honesty, and I was lucky to work with all three of them, and they affected and they changed my life. So I'm going to talk about uh, Bill Dudas, a veteran teacher, Dr. Vern Boss, incredible man and superintendent and deeply involved in the community, just passed away at age 96, and the entire life of, of devotion to the community is what uh, Vern signified. I was just talking with uh, Justin, our new assistant uh, superintendent. And he said, I just can't figure out why it is at church. I'm an usher, and about nine people, they all want to sit next to Vern Boss because he's a leader. And until the end, all three of these men were heavily involved in our community. It was just a few years ago that Bill Dudas was sitting right over here with his uniform on uh, because he wanted to be engaged, and he was engaged. And all three of these men including Dale Moore, who actually led this, they were the ones that really got our Veterans Plaza down at the center of our town built. And I was talking uh, two weeks ago with Marilyn Moore, and Marilyn's over here with her family, 
And she said, John, do you remember how controversial that was? And it was. It was about a year, year and a half. And there was even protesters down there. But you had Vern Boss, Bill Dudas, Dr. Dale Moore that stayed the course. And now we have, I would say, probably the major attraction in our town when people think of Georgetown Township, they think of the Veterans Plaza down there that is just, just beautiful. So I'd like to share with you a little bit today about these three men and how they affected our community. All educators, but all men that would not want to have the focal point on them. They would want the focal point to be on these young people up here. And they were dedicated to education, bringing up the next generation. And so I'm going to try to reflect on that the way I think that uh, Vern and Bill and Dale would want. So Bill Dudas, incredible man. And Bill was 17 years old, and he went in the Marines, went overseas, and he literally went, stormed the beaches of Normandy. Uh, a true hero at 17. His mom had to sign papers so that Bill could go. Uh, his daughter reflected that uh, her dad actually had to climb over bodies on the beach to make his way up there. And I uh, had us in your handout here, there's some pictures I wanted to make sure you had. And one of them was on the cover of Life magazine, and it's Bill Dudas. And the second day, during the cleanup operation, Bill was walking up the, the, the beach, and he turned towards the camera and took his picture, and they put this on the front, front page throughout America. The Granville Museum has a display dedicated to Bill. And then Bill went inland and drove the Germans back, and they bounced back with the Battle of the Bulge, and he was right involved in that. Bill got two Purple Hearts, and uh, as a teacher, Bill was very loud, and people would wonder why. It's because he lost most of his hearing, and it was very difficult for him. But a true hero did the GI Bill, and then in 1950, he started teaching for Granville Public Schools. Uh, maybe the most dangerous time of his life, I, I don't know there, but Bill was uh, loved by everyone. A true leader, highly respected, and when Bill taught, people took notice. The teachers highly respected him, the administration, and he held them accountable, and they better be on their toes. When I first started at Granville, there was 12 people in my life that I looked at, and I said, I want to be like that person. Three of those 12 are these men. That's the honest truth. I looked at him and I thought, I hope I can be a teacher like that someday. Because of his passion. And then, uh, along with uh, Bill at uh, Granville Public Schools was also Dr. Vern Boss. Dr. Vern Boss was a farm boy from over in Riesland. And he was drafted or he enlisted into World War II. And he was scheduled to go overseas. But as they gave him a number of tasks, he scored so high that they said, you know, we really would like you here and work with logistics. And that type of thing is what Dr. Vern Boss did. Again, the GI Bill became an incredible teacher, a principal out at Northville High School, and then became superintendent of schools for Granville. And when I was hired by Granville when I was 22 years old, I got to meet both of these men. And just the introduction to Vern he was so warm, so knowledgeable, and again, passionate, that I again thought, if I can just have a little of that someday, I will be a much, much better person. Then he went on to be superintendent of schools for Kent County, and then uh, later in his life, he was trustee for Grand Rapids Community College, but Vern was busy, busy, busy all of his life, right up until the end very much involved in the Reformed Church of America, uh, missions, but he really, 
as his son Bill said to me, Dad would not want you to be talking about him this way and praising him. And I said, Bill, if it's meant as a lesson, and maybe it's something that will affect young people, your dad would be all for it. And that's the way Vern was. A beautiful wife, Norma, highly involved with him throughout his life. They were pillars of our community that made this such a wonderful place to live. And then Dr. Dale Moore, uh, Dr. Moore, even before I got on the board, I had watched his life. And again, I thought, this man is giving, giving, giving. I'd like to be a little bit more like him. And Dr. Moore was very involved with his family and his kids and the school system here. He ran for the school board. He did such an incredible job that he became president of the school board for Jenison. Passionate man. As a dentist, uh, Dale related to me that he had um, about 4,500 patients. And then plus, of course, they owned the building and they had to run the business. Uh, Dale, when he was 57 years old, ran for public office. There was a huge debate on where the prison was going to go, the um, jail for Ottawa County. And so he ran for the Ottawa County Commission. He was instrumental in making that happen, along with Kennedy, the, the uh, school district for Ottawa County, getting schools established. He was a man that worked behind the scenes, inspired people to excellence and got things done. And Dale was the one that was behind our Veterans Plaza down at the center of our town. And he was joined by Bill Dudas and Vern Boss. And as I shared with you earlier, they made this possible. And Jim just asked me, John, did you bring props? And you, you can't be a teacher without bringing some props. But I wanted to bring a brick that uh, actually Dale gave me and we have these available at the township offices. And you do not have to, uh, we will even, ex if you weren't in the Georgetown area, but you would like to have a brick for a loved one, even living in another state, uh, we will gladly dedicate one of these for you. Uh, they said they're $100. That's to cover the engraving. And then for our people to be able to put them down there. So if you have a loved one that you would like to signify their life that was in the military, please visit our people. We'd be happy, happy to do that. It's usually about twice a year, usually before Veterans Day, where a crew will go down there and they'll place some bricks. These men believed in the dignity of everyone and in improving themselves. And they used to read a great deal, particularly Dale. But they would read, and I'm sure they'd want me to share some books with you to think about. One is The Purpose Driven Life, especially for young people. I even got some copies if you'd like, like one, I'll give one to you. I had a student who was struggling the other day, uh, one of the most brilliant young men I've ever seen in my life. His knowledge of finance uh, well surpasses mine. Brilliant. And um, our young people are going through such a challenge today. It's every generation has their challenges, but with the internet today, it's more challenging. Uh, they need our support and they need our love. And we need to let them know that we're here for them. And when we look at young people passing away, number one is automobile accidents. I was a driver's training teacher for 30 years. That's number one. Number two is suicide. And here they've got everything to live for. How can they be depressed? Well, many of them don't think anyone loves them. Or social media has been very rough on them. And I've had students commit suicide in the past. I remember a good friend of mine, his name is Tom Nauta, and we were at a funeral for one of our, our students that had committed suicide. And Tom said something to me that was so profound. He said, John, this was a permanent solution to a temporary problem in that person's life. It's so sad we weren't able to reach them. If you want to do something incredibly powerful, tell others how much they mean to you, how you love them. For those of you in the band, especially the seniors,
if you want to change the lives of people you love, write them a letter and tell them how much you love them. They will cherish that till they die. And it helps lift people out of depression. We just don't do enough of that, and we should. So, um, Purpose Driven Life, excellent book. Hope you'll consider it. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Of course, the Bible. Incredible Foundation. And The Bend in the River. We hope you learn about our community. And I used to be a business teacher, and I had my students read this. How to Win Friends and Influence People. People have to smile and be more engaging today. This is what Bill, and this is what Vern, and this is what Dale did. In fact, I was sharing with Steve Moore about his dad, and when I was um, on the township board, Dale encouraged me to read management books and then discuss it with them. Here these men are in the twilight of their lives, and they're still reaching out, and every day was important, and they're trying to change one life at a time, and they are the type of individuals that build a society. Grass withers and the flowers all fade, and the word of our Lord goes on forever. What about people? Each one of these men touched ton, tens of thousands of lives. I believe it can go on for generations if we share it with others and we tell the story of greatness. And that's what these men did every day of their lives. Now, an illustration I do for my students. I talk about learning and good books. And you please go to school, please go to college, maybe. Learn a craft. Uh, your family is so important. What are you gonna build upon? So you get this foundation and you stand there as an individual how can you do the impossible? How can you take the next steps in life? What about all the challenges you have to deal with? Could you take eight bolts and balance them on top of that one? And maybe I can and maybe I can't. We'll see what the wind does. But when you have a foundation that you're building on, anything is possible. Most things are possible. And that's what these three great men did with their lives. They dedicated their lives to you because they loved you. They wanted the best for our community. And it was, I just retired last year. And so I've had one year of retirement, gone well. But many people, when they get to be this age, they go, you know, I'm not sure. We have to push ourselves. Every day is precious. And we should live it to its fullest. And when we do that, what seems impossible can become possible. And so you can take six bolts and balance them on top of one. When you have a balanced life, when you have an education or experiences, what dramatically changed these men's lives? I think it was the service. First, they had a terrific not necessarily terrific, but they had a wholesome. Now, these men did face major challenges. Middle class, struggling. But they had a, a, a dream. The military taught them discipline. The military taught them honor. The military taught them to get things done in a creative way. And that's what they did with their lives. And so they were able to accomplish so much for you and me because of this. So I'm going to try this. Hopefully I can do this. So these six bolts will balance on this one, at least for a little while. And when you have an education and you have a family, also I recommend do some traveling. I used to take students to t with the Rotary in uh, Granville to Tijuana, Mexico to see what the third world countries were like and we'd build shelters for the homeless. It was life changing. Please do not be playing video games. 
and not being engaged in life. Cherish this time where you have with grandpa and grandma. Love them. Please put it in writing. And grandpa and grandma, if you take time to be with them and share your history and your knowledge, you can help them to do the impossible. So I want to thank you for this honor. And I'm wondering if we just we could take a moment and I could do a quick prayer. Would you mind bowing your heads, please? Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that we're able to gather here today and just to celebrate the lives of these three men, but celebrate the lives that were willing to lay their lives down for us. These men would die for us. The people in this audience, they would die for those children because they love them, and it's important that they know that. We want to thank you for this beautiful day, this free country that we live in, and the opportunities that you've given us. May we carry on the heritage from Dr. Vern Boss and Dr. Dale Moore, and for Bill Dudas, and how they have blessed us. May we be, from their example, bless others. And all God's people, they said, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. That was excellent, John. Thank you so much. Once a teacher, always a teacher, right? He was my teacher. He was uh, he was also our manager's teacher, Rob Litchock. So when he retired, I suddenly felt old. <laughs> but thank you so much. And those men, too, you know, it's interesting that he chose those three men. I didn't know he was working that up until recently, and I knew those three men as well. Mr. Boss, we used to hit the baseball in his yard by West Elementary, and he didn't mind us retrieving it, didn't get uh, grumpy. We appreciated that. Dale Moore was my supervisor when I was a trustee. Always used to put a firecracker in front of my place where I sat. I'm not sure why to this day. I'm not sure how to interpret that, but I'll ask his, his widow here. Maybe she can shed some light on that. And then Bill Dudas, he gave me a B plus in shop class and ruined my 4.0 in junior high because of a letter opener I made that I got a B on. And then my mom kept that, and I remember looking at it years later thinking, I didn't even deserve a B, probably a C or a D, so he, he was generous. Anyway, at this time, we're going to um, hear from our marching band again. They're going to play America the Beautiful, and then immediately following the conclusion of that, there will be one minute of silence. We'll just remember those that have fallen in service and defense of this nation. Thank you. Now taps.
You can remain standing. We'll conclude now today. Appreciate you coming out today. I appreciated John's emphasis on the next generation and all of us having the influence and the ability to speak into the hearts and lives of the next generation. So some of your kids may not have been here or, or possibly grandchildren. You might see them later today at a barbecue or in a swimming pool. And I just would ask you and encourage you to continue to tell your story, tell the story of this great land and of the privilege and the freedoms that we enjoy. Pass that along to that next generation so they too would celebrate it and cherish what we all so much cherish here in the United States. So thank you. Have a great day.